thinking of taking your child out of public school and homeschooling them? Well, this three-part video series will share two things. My family's experience, challenges, and victories with transitioning from public to homeschool after first grade and onward from both my perspective, the parent, which you'll hear about in this first video, and my daughter's perspective, which you absolutely do not want to miss in the second and third parts of this series. It did not start well, but we ended up homeschooling all the way through high school, which we didn't even know we would do at the beginning, including dual enrollment with the community college. Hey, I'm Kathleen Rumford, software developer and entrepreneur who turned into a homeschooling mom for 15 years of two daughters. And I'm sharing this video with you to offer encouragement and a glimpse into a couple of reasons why people homeschool. Plus, you'll hear directly from my daughter in her late 20s now as to her thoughts on homeschooling and transitioning from public school after first grade as the homeschool child. To make sure you don't miss any of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. By you liking, commenting, and or subscribing, you're telling YouTube that this was valuable and they'll push it out to help more homeschoolers. So when I started homeschooling, I didn't call myself a teacher, neither did the state, and neither did my family. I was a software engineer. I had put myself through college and grad school only to step out of my hard-earned, well-paying career to be the main caregiver and raiser of our kids. My husband and I knew that the Lord had called us to parent and that we were our children's most important caregivers. But we did not know that homeschooling was in our future. And to be honest, at the time, we didn't even know homeschooling existed or was actually legal. So why did we start homeschooling after my older daughter's first grade year? People homeschool for many reasons, and there are many benefits and efficiencies with homeschooling, including those that I share in the video linked above. There were two to three primary reasons that I started exploring alternatives to public school. One reason was because I wanted my girls to learn Spanish, and it wasn't being taught in the elementary grades of our public school system. I had taken five years of Spanish in school and loved it, and I had even put my older daughter into Spanish-speaking daycare for a year, starting at 10 months old, to help wire her brain for Spanish and other languages. So when she was in first grade, I looked around at private schools and other options, only to reach the conclusion that I not only had enough knowledge to teach her Spanish at the beginning levels, but I felt more and more that God was calling me to homeschool her, which I had been learning about during my research. Another strong reason was that our daughter was very hard on herself and I felt like we had lost her. I'm sure I won't be able to fully articulate this, but I realized that something had changed when she went off to school. She was leaving us at 7.30 in the morning till three in the afternoon and our routine was the common public school routine of waking up, getting ready for school, coming home to have a brief chat and snack, do homework and a chore, go play, get dinner, some family time, bathe and bedtime. I wanted us to be the ones to pour our family's values into her rather than the state pouring theirs in. And with all the things that a parent has to do, I did not have the quantity of time with her when she was in school, which meant there was less opportunity for quality time. We needed to get her back. And I felt that God was calling me to homeschool to do that. Does that sound familiar? There's a reason you're being called to homeschool. And although you may have some doubts, the pull to homeschool is strong. If you're struggling with your decision, you may want to check out my videos on should I homeschool, which could help give you some clarity. Now, the first year for us especially wasn't easy. The academics weren't that hard to teach, although it did take organization and planning. But the issue for us was the fact that she missed the public school elementary social life and she felt like she was being punished somehow by being homeschooled. I didn't fully understand this at the time, and I wish I had communicated with her better about my decision to homeschool, as well as ask her thoughts on the matter after the decision was made. But she shared with me recently in her late 20s that her negative reaction was because she loves to be part of the social community, and she had no idea that through homeschooling, we would find and create new ones. You'll hear more about that directly from her in the second and third parts of this video series. So because of this mild resistance, midway through the year, I asked her to write a list of homeschool versus public school pros and cons, the things that were important to her. I held my breath because I had no idea what things she would write or how it would turn out. Well, afterwards, she actually determined for herself that homeschooling came out a bit on top, and that was a game changer. By then, we had joined a science co-op and a field trip co-op with many other homeschooling families. So over the course of the year, she did make friends and had plenty of social interactions and community. This was in addition to all of the learning and reading and growing at home that we did together. 
with greater quantity of time and increased quality time. When the school year was done, we all agreed, even my doubting husband and mother-in-law, that she was happier and more loving. We had gotten her back and we were very grateful to God for nudging me to homeschool her and for his provision. Now, I'm sharing this with you from a parent's perspective as an encouragement to you, but I think it would be helpful for you to hear directly from my daughter herself. And although she's in her late 20s at the time of this recording, she still has insights into how she felt about the transition from public school to homeschool for second grade and a couple key takeaways on homeschooling for the long haul. But before you head over to part two of this series, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section below. And if you found the video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss other videos related to homeschooling, parenting, and personal finance literacy for kids. Okay, head over to part two and I'll see you over there.